Ani Bojo Kinawea, uh, Northern Indigenous Kais, Ukwemakong, Minowan Swakamak and Donjiba, Anishinaabe King and Donji, uh, Nime Do Dem, Anishinaabe Indau, Kinoma again, Minowa Shkebewe Sindau. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Josh Lewis. Uh, my spirit name is Noden, which means wind. Um, I am one of two Indigenous student support coordinators within the Ottawa Carleton District School Board. And I work with students from kindergarten all the way to grade 12. And I work at different schools throughout the uh, school board. Um, my last week, I shared a video with you all about uh, my bundle and the items that are in my bundle and the purpose of those items. And so each week, I'm going to be sharing a different video, different teaching or story um, with you all to, to continue learning during this time of COVID. Um, during this pandemic where we have to be unfortunately virtual for some of our learning but this week i wanted to talk a bit about something that some of you are probably familiar with because uh it's been part of our schools now for the, the last few years um it's known as orange shirt day and it takes place on september 30th and on that day um we wear orange shirts to honor and to recognize the survivors and those who um unfortunately didn't make it um, from the uh, Indian residential school system. Um, also the Indian day school system and industrial schools that existed all over Turtle Island uh, for hundreds of years. Um, and so it's a day of, of, of grief and mourning um, and it's a day of kind of reflecting. And so a lot of uh, teachers, non-Indigenous teachers, non-Native teachers, they really try their best I think to to share this in the classrooms and you'll see a lot of them wearing orange shirts and maybe they'll bring in guest speakers and things like that and I think that's really important um, that's how we learn right when we have conversations and they're not always easy I know for indigenous students like you that are watching this it can be something really tough and challenging to to think about or to talk about um, and maybe when you're seeing this happening you know, a lot of people around you might not really understand what's going on. But for you, it's part of your story. It's part of your family's history. And so whenever Orange Shirt Day comes up, I do think of you guys. And I know that it is a hard day. And so this year, it can be hard as well. Because it's going to be, again, possibly virtual. And um, maybe less students. And maybe there's going to be less of a focus on, you know, the importance of that day. So I really just want you guys to think about... Uh, Orange Shirt Day a little bit differently this year um, and take that time to reflect. Um, I know that uh, this story is very close to all of our, our hearts, you know, and so I want to acknowledge that. Um, I wanted to talk a bit about uh, the orange shirt, I guess, and where that story comes from. And so I've done a bit of my own research and I'm not going to share the whole story because I'm not familiar with the entire history, but um, it is uh, something that was started um, in BC by a survivor of residential school. Her name is Phyllis Webstad. And uh, she talks a bit about, you know, when she went to residential school, she had an orange shirt on. And then when she got to the school, they took that away from her and they stripped her um, of, that, of that shirt and of a lot of other things, including, you know, culture and language. And so that orange shirt, I think for her is a way of recognizing the traumas and things that happen at those residential schools. And so oftentimes you will see, you know, a lot of people wearing these orange shirts, which is really great on September 30th. So that's why you see that happening in case you were wondering. I also wanted to share this really cool pin that my wife got. It's a, a bridge bark pin and it's beaded also. And so she wears it kind of like on her, her jacket or something during uh, orange shirt day to honor, again, all of those survivors um, and those who didn't make it. So again, it's really a tough time of grieving. And um, I wanted to share a bit about my story and my understanding of residential schools, just to kind of help you guys understand that like, it's a, it is a really tough thing to learn about. And so for me, when I was uh, growing up, no one in my family really talked about their experiences going there. I didn't even know about it, right? 
and then it was I think it was around 20 years old I had to do a project for my indigenous studies course and residential schools was one of the topics and I think my teacher at the time knew that I was kind of unaware of this so she told me to research it but she said ask my family because I think that the real stories would come out from that and I think she did that on purpose so that I would have those conversations with my family and so I did I reached out to my great aunties and my uncles and cousins and they all shared stories with me about their experiences going to residential school and so again it was something that I didn't really know about up until my late 20s. Once I started out finding out about residential schools, it really helped me understand about who I am, why I was missing certain things in my life, and why certain things are going on within my family, you know. And it was because of a lot of the intergenerational uh, traumas and impacts of these residential schools. And so really, as a young person, it, it was a lot to like really talk about it and reflect on it. And uh, I'm really glad, though, that I did learn about it because um, it's really helped me understand a lot of things going forward in reclaiming my culture and really being proud today to be an Anishinaabe. Whereas maybe 10 years ago, I wasn't really sure what that meant. And so um, on Orange Shirt Day, I just asked that all of you just take that time to reflect on your on your family, um, to reflect on, you know, your ancestors from the past and, uh, you know, say something nice for them. You know, you can say something, you could put some tobacco down, um, you could sing a drum song or you can just go to the water and just uh, put your wishes into the water and say miigwech. Thank you um, for their lives and for all of uh, what they give to us. Because without our ancestors, we wouldn't be here today, um, which is really powerful when you think about it. So again, Orange Shirt Day is kind of a, a tough day for Indigenous students. And I just, again, want to acknowledge that. But take that time with your family to reflect on it, have conversations, and, uh, and try your best to take care of yourself that day. And if you are feeling like school is a bit overwhelming and you need to take a break, you know, make sure to let your teachers know and... Uh, could even let me know and I can try and support um, in that way of letting your teachers know why you need to take that break from school because it is really tough to you know grieve and think about heavy thoughts and then try and have to do uh, you know a, some kind of lesson or some kind of uh, assignment you know five minutes later right so I really just want to acknowledge that today um, yeah and again September 30th orange shirt day um, yeah, um, don't really have much more to say, but I just want to say chimigwech, thank you very much, and bama pico up, min. Until next time, I'll see you again. And uh, yeah, take care of yourselves, everyone. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next Monday. Okay, bama pico.